Welcome to Salty Lots, your front row seat to extreme underwater adventure, spare fishing, and all things under the sea. Join the Salty Locks crew as we venture into the slightly cloudy waters of Vesa Beach St. Thomas for an epic spare fishing adventure. Watch as we navigate the shipwrecks and coral reefs in search of the biggest catch. But will we make it out with our spare guns intact? You'll have to stay tuned to find out. saying so i'm running on a little bit of a limited time so i need to get in the water get some dinner and get out i'm in freedom hoy right now so i'm thinking something like either vesa beach or maybe even cookie point we'll make a decision in a little while you'll be there with us let's see what we can get today butterflies are beautiful over here there's so many butterflies like all over from the time i left home all the way back to country anyway see you guys down there so I did a live on YouTube this day, showing us getting ready for the dive. So here's the raw footage. There's a link to the full video at the top if you'd like to take a look, and I'll also leave it in the description below. I had an issue with the knob on the tank that Joseph attempted to resolve. Sometimes things don't go as smoothly as expected. Let's kick over to the video to see what happened. All right, we were about to get ready to go in, but I had a little bit of a malfunction. The piece right here that turns the air on and off is just spinning and it's not actually catching to turn the air on. And my brother is responsible for the tanks. So he's going back to the house to either get a tool or another tank. Probably both would be best. So I'm just going to wait here until he gets back. Take in the scene. Okay, so with the issue resolved, we swim out to the location we're going to drop in on. Vesa Beach is riddled with shipwrecks. We drop in on some rubble and I see an anemone. Say that really fast five times. It's the middle of November, so the jellyfish are abundant. There is a particular shipwreck that we normally start on, which is probably about 10 to 15 minutes swim out from the shore. But it's been about a year or so since we dove this area and our bearings are just a bit off. There go a couple jacks in the distance. Nothing really big enough to pique my interest, but I see a shipwreck up ahead. As I get closer, I realize this isn't the one we were looking for. This wreck is normally our second stop on the dive, so at this point, I realize we kicked past the first wreck. There are usually mangrove snappers swimming through here, but none today. I check all sides to make sure there's nothing resting nearby. Next to this sits the helm and a chair that I usually use for a photo op. I've gotten lobster here before, so I check the nooks and crannies. No such luck today. Let's take a seat for old time's sake.
As we swim along, this is yet another chair we see along the way. Okay, now we're rolling up on the wreck we normally begin every vessel dive with. There's a little bit of everything left on here, including a stove. I see a mangrove snapper but get snagged on the boat due to my hanging lobster snare and have now missed the opportunity for a catch. This is a great example of one of the reasons it's important to streamline your gear and keep everything nice and close. Just in that split second, I lost a potential catch. Meanwhile, as I continue exploring, we'll cut over to G.I. Joe. You are going to want to see this. He's spotted a snapper in the tailpipe of the ship. Fully loaded, fires in. And now we've got a stuck shaft. It's really in there. Every time he tugs on it, a powdery mist lifts. It becomes a team effort as we lose quite a bit of time attempting to pull the shaft from its new home. After a few failed attempts, we realize this will have to be a return recovery mission. Long story short, we had to remove the line from the gun and move on. There is no way to remove the shaft on this dive. So with the ship in our rear view, we continue our dive to the next wreck. The ocean is littered with random items as we head east. A mini generator, a big old bottle of rum. Perhaps Jack Sparrow recently paid a visit. A mini oven? Yep, and even a boat engine. Mm -hmm. 
Our next stop is to the Tiara Take a Chance Shipwreck. We discovered this one a few years back and it always holds some interesting tales. We've got a few mangrove snappers swimming around it today, but I'm the only one left with a fully functional spear gun. One of the first times I was exploring this ship, I made the mistake of setting my spare gun down to inspect the vessel. On my way back to the center, a Kubera snapper came flying out of the cabin. By the time I got the gun back in my hand, the snapper was long gone, leaving behind only a puff of sand. That's a pretty decent sized turtle hanging out under the boat. I started sizing up this mangrove snapper and quickly decided it wasn't worth firing off the gun into the wreck. It's just about that time to start heading back into shore. There's still plenty to see on the way back in. Although there wasn't much to catch for dinner today, it was still a great dive with another lesson learned. Don't shoot into a wreck with your bands fully loaded or you may just spend the rest of your dive trying to get your shaft back from the deep. On the next dive, we'll explore the shipwrecks on the southwest side of Vesa Beach. There is one that sticks out of the water and we haven't explored it yet. It's sure to be more fruitful than this dive. Subscribe right now and make sure you hit the notification bell so you get notified when the next video drops. Until our next dive, stay salty my friends.